Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to continue solving systems of equations using elimination. Okay, so I want to remind you that our goal um, when we are trying to use the elimination method is to create opposite coefficients for one set of our variables. Opposite meaning different signs. Um, so sometimes we are given equations that have opposite coefficients already, but sometimes we're not. So there are cases where we will need to multiply one or both equations to create the opposite coefficients. So before we talk about the full solving um, process, we're going to do a few strategizing problems. So we're going to look at different um, sets of equations, different systems, and we're going to see if we can strategize how to create opposite coefficients. Now oftentimes with these types of problems, there's multiple ways you can do it. So we're just going to talk about one way that we could create this for each set. So notice it says we do not need to solve. Our goal here is just to create opposite coefficients. So let's look at this first um, set of equations. We have 4x plus 3y equals 3 and negative 2x plus 2y equals negative 2. So I can see that these are not opposite coefficients and these are not. So I want to look at each set and determine if there would be an easy way to create opposite coefficients. So if I look at 3 and 2, there's no easy way to turn a 2 into a 3, and there's no easy way to turn a 3 into a 2. So I'm probably not going to want to focus on the y's. But if I look at the x's, I notice that there is a pretty easy way to turn negative 2 into negative 4. And then I would have a set of opposite coefficients. So we're going to try to um, focus on our x terms. So remember, our goal is to turn this negative 2 into a negative 4, so they become opposites. So the way I can do that is by multiplying the entire equation by 2. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to multiply both sides of the entire equation by 2. And I'm actually going to rewrite both equations um, to the side. So we still have 4x plus 3y equals 3. And then here we have 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4x. Here we have 2 times 2y, which is positive 4y. And on the other side, we have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So you can see by multiplying our bottom equation by 2, we were able to create a set of opposite coefficients, positive 4 and negative 4. Okay, now let's look at this next set. So if I look at my x values, there's no easy way to turn a 3 into a 5. So I'm going to try to look at my y values. And if this is a positive 4y, I would want this to become a negative 4y. So it's already negative, but right now it's negative 1. But it should be easy enough for us um, to change it so they have opposite coefficients. So since this is a positive 4y, once again, we want this to become a negative 4y. It's already negative, so all we need to do is multiply both sides by positive 4. And now, remember, we're multiplying every term. So 4 times 3x is 12x. 4 times negative y is negative 4y. And 5 times 4 is 20. And then my bottom equation stays the same. And once again, we have created opposite coefficients. Okay, let's look down here at example three. So there's no easy way to turn any no easy way to turn a negative two into a positive five to make these opposite. So I'm going to see if we can work with our x's. So if this is a positive six x, we want this to become a negative six x. And there is an easy way to turn a three into a negative six. So we're going to be working with our x terms. So once again, I want this to become negative. 6x. So I'm going to go and multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2. Our goal, once again, is to turn this into a negative 6x. And I can do that by multiplying it by negative 2. So if I multiply out every term, I'm left with negative 6x plus 4y, because negative 2 times negative 2 times y is positive 4y, and then equals positive 10 and my second equation would stay the same. And you could see that we have created opposite 
coefficients. All right, let's have a look at this last um, example. So here, this one is a little bit trickier because there's no good way to turn a 2 into a 3 and there's no good way to turn a 3 into a 7. So when you have a case like this, you know that you're actually going to need to multiply both equations to create those opposite coefficients. So we can either change um, the y's or the x's, but in this case, let's say we're going to try to make the x's have this opposite coefficients. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with the least common multiple of 2 and 3. So I'm wondering, what's the smallest number that both 2 and 3 go into? So the LCM of 2 and 3 is going to be 6. So we want this to become a negative 6, and we want this to become a positive 6. So I can turn this into a negative 6 by multiplying the entire equation by 3. And I can turn this into a positive 6 by multiplying the entire equation, both sides, by 2. So you do have to be pretty strategic here. We have to look at them and say, okay, what is our least common multiple? And then how do I turn that number into the least common multiple? So on the top, I have 3 times negative 2x, which is negative 6x. And then I have 3 times 3y, which is 9y. And then 1 times 3. On the bottom, I have 2 times 3x, which is positive 6x. 2 times negative 7y, which is negative 14y. And 4 times 2, which is 8. So you can see that here we were able to create opposite coefficients for our x terms. We have negative 6x and positive 6x. But in order for us to do this, we did have to multiply both equations. So that's definitely the more challenging side of these types of problems. OK, let's see if we can actually solve the entire equation now that we know how to create the opposite coefficients. So this first one, once again, I'm going to look at my two terms and decide which one will it be easier to make um, opposite coefficients. So there's no good way to turn a 4 into a 5, but I can turn a 2 into a 6. So we can create opposite coefficients here. So I can turn a 2 into a 6 by multiplying by 3. However, since this term is negative, I do want to turn this term positive so I'm actually going to multiply both sides by negative 3. Okay, so my top equation is going to stay the same. And then on the bottom, I have negative 3 times negative 2x, which becomes positive 6x. And then I have negative 3 times negative 4y, which becomes positive 12y. And then on the right side, I'm left with a negative number, and I'm left with negative 42. So you can see that by multiplying our bottom equation by negative 3, I was able to create the opposite coefficients for my x terms. So now I'm ready to do the elimination method where we add vertically. So negative 6x plus 6x is 0. Those are eliminated. And then 5y plus 12y is 17y. And then 25 plus negative 42 is negative 17. Now to finish solving, I can divide both sides by 17. And we're left with y equals negative 1. Now remember, this is just part of my answer. I still need to solve for x. So I'm going to go back and substitute into either equation. It doesn't matter which one. Um, so I'll substitute into the first equation. You will get the same answer either way. So remember, to substitute, we take out our variable, and I'm going to replace it with what y is equal to, which is negative 1. And now let's simplify. This gives us negative 6x minus 5 equals 25. The inverse of subtraction is addition, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Negative 6x equals 30. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6, leaving us with x equals negative 5. 
And remember, we always write our final answer as an ordered pair. Negative 5, negative 1. Okay, let's try one more together. So here, uh, let's do some strategy and let's figure out how we can create opposite coefficients. So here we actually have two pretty good options. We can either turn these into opposite coefficients, so we would want to turn this into a negative 6x, that wouldn't be too hard to do. Or here, we can try to turn this into a negative 3y. So let's say we decide to eliminate our y's. Really, either way would be about the same level of difficulty, I think. So if I want to eliminate my y's, since this is a positive 3y, we want this to become a negative 3y, which means I need to multiply my top equation by negative 3. So this leaves us with negative 9x minus 3y equals negative 33. My bottom equation will stay the same. And you can see that now we have opposite coefficients. So now we can proceed with the elimination method. These two terms will eliminate. And here we have negative 9x plus 6x, so negative 3x. And on the left, or on the right, we have negative 33 plus 24, which is negative 9. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. And we're left with 1x equals positive 3. Now to finish solving, we still need to find y. So I can substitute it into either original equation. So let's say we substitute it into the first equation. But you should end up with the same answer either way. So we're substituting for x, so I'm going to take out x, and I'm going to substitute 3, because x is equal to 3. And I'm going to simplify, and then in one more step, I can solve. The opposite of positive 9 is negative 9, and we're left with y equals 2. So our final answer should be the ordered pair, 3, 2. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can give this problem a try. Just as a hint, try to eliminate your x terms. All right, let's go ahead and check our work below. So, um, like I said, I decided to eliminate the x terms because I noticed that I could really easily change this number into a negative 4. So I change a negative 1 into a negative 4 by multiplying the entire equation by 4. So your second equation should become negative 4x minus 8x equals 32. So then we can add vertically, and that leaves us with negative 13y equals 13. And then we divide both sides by negative 13, leaving us with y equals negative 1. So this value I could either substitute here or here into our original equation. I chose to substitute it into the first equation so you can see that y became negative 1. And then I simplified. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And then in two steps you can finish solving. Subtract 5 on both sides, divide both sides by 4, and you get x equals negative 6. So the final answer is negative 6, negative 1. Okay, we are going to try one challenge problem together. So this is a challenge problem because it's one where we're going to actually need to multiply both equations. So I look and I see a 3 and a 4 here and a 3 and a 4 here. At least these are already opposites. They're negative and positive. So let's say we decide to try to make opposite coefficients uh, for our y terms. So we need to decide what is the least common multiple of 3 and 4. So I'm wondering uh, what number uh, is a multiple of both 3 and 4. And I know that the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. 
So our goal is to turn this into a negative 12 and this into a positive 12. So they will be opposite coefficients. So that means I'm going to need to multiply the top equation by positive 3. And I'm going to need to multiply the bottom equation by positive 4. So our top equation becomes 9x minus 12y equals 99. And our bottom equation is going to become 16x plus 12y equals 76. So here you can see that we have created opposite coefficients, which means when we add vertically, those terms are going to cancel out. So if I do add vertically, I'm going to cross these out because that becomes 0. This becomes 25x equals 175. And then if I divide both sides by 25, I'm left with x equals 7. Now I still need to find my y, so I'm going to substitute that into either of my original two equations. Um, let's substitute it into the second equation this time. But you can pick either one. So we have 4 times 7. I substituted x with 7 plus 3y oops, equals 19. Now let's simplify. We have 28 plus 3y equals 19. And then I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides. And I'm left with 3y equals negative 9. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, leaving us with y equals negative 3. So here, our x value is 7, our y value is negative 3. So our final answer is the ordered pair 7, negative 3. Okay, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching.